Hi everyone and welcome back. I'm excited to be sharing some helpful information regarding autism spectrum disorder. So in this video, you know, I will also be sharing next steps to take if you are concerned um, that your child may be autistic. Um, so let's dive in. So now that we've talked about the characteristics of autism, what now, right? What if you're sitting here and saying, oh my gosh, my child does this. My child does that too. Oh my gosh, am I concerned? Does he or she have autism? I would say the next steps would be here. Um, and the next steps we should consider is we could complete the MCHAT, right? There's a new version. So it's an MCHAT revised with a follow-up interview. And it's specifically tailored. It's, it's an assessing tool to see if children are at risk for autism. So we have low risk, moderate risk, and high risk, depending on how you score on that MCHAT. So before you were able to do this with your doctor, with your pediatrician, there is, um, you could do it yourself online. It, should get, it just gets a little bit confusing, but I will link the the link i will put the link in the description below if you want to take a look at it um and let me know guys if you guys are interested for me to do a video on how to complete the mchat rf i would love to do that but i i want to know if you guys are interested if that's something you guys want um so that would be the first thing is maybe doing the mchat if we're concerned right and honestly when we're doing this when we're using this tool to assess just be honest, you know, just be honest, because if we're going to go into assessing or being concerned for our children, I've seen a lot of parents um, kind of overcompensate. They want to say, oh, no, no, my child doesn't do this, you know. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, my child does that. Yes. Because as parents, we do get afraid of a diagnosis, right? We don't want something to be wrong with our child. Um, and and in, this, in this channel, my channel, I'm here to kind of tell you there's nothing wrong with your child. They just think differently. They learn differently. And let's embrace that thought, right? Um, so first thing, let's get the MCHAT. Second of all, speak to a pediatrician, you know, talk to him or her. Tell him, hey, you know, this is going on with my child. Um, I've given it some time and I don't see that this behavior is getting better. You know, I'm concerned about his speech, whatever it is. I think it's wonderful to just be honest and speak to your pediatrician. Mind you, your pediatrician does not know your child like you do. So you are the only one that will know if there's something different with your child, right? Um, this I, I know this becomes a little bit difficult for parents that it's their first child and they don't have a lot of, um, they don't have a lot of opportunities to be around other children. So it's kind of hard to say what is typical and what isn't if you haven't been around children. However, let's talk to a pediatrician. Let's do the MCHAT. And, and third, if you're pediatrician is not being supportive and say, no, you know, it's fine. Give them some time. I would say push, push for a developmental assessment. Say, hey, you know what? Refer me to a developmental pediatrician so they could do a, an evaluation. So there's three types of professionals that can do an evaluation uh, for ASD. And we have a developmental pediatrician. We have a child neurologist, right? So they study the mind, the brain, I'm sorry, the brain, the spine and nerves. So a child neurologist can evaluate for autism and then also a child psychologist or psychiatrist as well they can all do an evaluation and um, determine whether or not the child has autism and they will tell you his or her skills in each level or in each domain that they that they look at um, so that is my recommendation if you're worried about your child having autism now let's move on to the facts of autism it is important to know that for the boys are four times as likely to have autism. And I know that there is a belief out there that vaccines have been causing autism, but it has been debunked through research. And honestly, this had this information I got from the CDC. So I will also link their website information there. It is the CDC is a wonderful resource, free resource where you can ask where you can definitely get more information on autism, what to do, screening tools. They even have a free fat fact sheet that you can download and you know just keep it for yourself you can use it at different po points of your child's development to see if it is a concern or not um, so it's important to take advantage of these resources if you are concerned of autism don't don't let your fear overcome you okay let's just let's just think 
logically let's make steps forward because the better prepared we are the best we're going to be able to serve your child um, another fact is that once we get early intervention the earlier the better right so right now because i, for, I forgot the act name. Let, me, let me look into my notes there is an individual individuals with disability education act which allows states to develop an early intervention system each state has different ways of functioning, but they may qualify through that act. They may qualify for early intervention, right? So a child that is demonstrating developmental delays may qualify for early intervention. And the best thing is that the sooner you get it, the better it is. So I work with a lot of families with their kids specifically, their, their kids, all the kids that I work with have developmental delays. So whether it is speech, whether it is um, process, sensory processing disorders, we have kids with cerebral palsy, Down syndrome, and autism. I would say that in my field as of now, thus far, I've worked the most with kids with autism and kids with speech delays. I am not a speech pathologist, speech and language pathologist. I'm an infant development specialist. So I do, do I, I specialize in child development. And that is my bread and butter. However, I've been around so many different children that I'm able to kind of tell like, oh, maybe we should do this type of evaluation for this kiddo. Um, and I will support a child that is having difficulties with speech as well. Um, so my, I've honestly have seen such progress with kiddos that get intervention early on. I worked with kids from zero to three. After three years old here in California, you stop getting services through the regional center because then the school takes over. The school district takes over and your private insurance if you qualify for services through them as well. So it is a very, very good and helpful way to get education for the parents and support for the children early on. So uh, those, those are the few facts that I figured were kind of interesting. And... Um, just comment down below. Tell me what kind of things you're interested in. What else do you want to know in terms of autism? But my my message here at the end is really, let's just love on our children. Let's help them, okay? No matter how we feel, no matter how afraid we are of a possible diagnosis, let's do it for our children. Let's serve them the best we can. And um, so please, let's let's take a, a step forward and if there's action that needs to be taken, let's take it now. Let's not wait till tomorrow or three weeks from now or until they're four or five. Um, if you have any questions, if I've missed any information, please comment down below. I will be looking down at comments and responding. Um, and I really honestly appreciate your time. Thank you um, and I hope to see you in the next video. Have a great day.